So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the invitation. So the paper I will present to you is entitled um, Political Connection and Insider Trading. It's a joint work with uh, Thomas Bouveau, who is at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and Renaud Coulon, who is um, from Melbourne in Australia. I mean, from France, but he's in Melbourne. And I'm from ex Marseille University. So as you may guess, this paper will be about political connections. So people connected to politicians, so especially to one politician, which will be the uh, president of France from 2007 to 2012, which is Nicolas Sarkozy. And we will investigate how political connection might play a role or not in the context of insider trading. So trading on the stock market by insider of listed firms, so by board members. So the general motivation of this paper is that we get interested into insider trading. So insider trading is uh, trading by using privileged information. So on the stock market, you are, everybody is allowed to trade. Everybody is allowed to trade using private information, otherwise there will not be any stock market. But you are not allowed to use privileged information. So then the legal definition of what is a privileged information is pretty complicated, but basically it's something that you have access to as an information, but other people cannot have access to it. Okay? And you are not allowed to use such an information to take decision about which trade to do, to sell or to buy or whatever. Why? Because, I mean, this is like you have an advantage which is unfair. And so insider trading using privileged information is heavily regulated and forbidden basically on, on all stock markets. The reasons for this are really simple. It's basically because there are expected costs to society. The expected cost to society of such illegal trading are that, well, if, people, if some people actually cheat, well, this might reduce public trust into the stock market, so people will be discouraged to use the stock market, to invest, etc., etc. And if you think that stock market is good for the development of an economy, this is bad, so you want to avoid it. This might also create conflict of interest within insiders, so within people who have access to privileged information. So they should not use it. I mean, so. so there are different reasons why you don't want that people use privileged information. And of course, everybody might have privileged information. But there is a category of people who are more likely to have privileged information. These are board members. So people who sit on the boards of listed firms, so because they are in the firm, well, they, have, they are more likely to have access to privileged information. So these are people who are, who are at higher risk from using privileged information compared to us, for example. I don't know, maybe some of us are sitting on boards, but I'm not. So I might have privileged information, but those who are sitting on boards, they are more likely to have it and to use it. And so these are people who are monitored by authorities in all developed countries because they are at higher risk. So, what we want to do in this paper is to test the idea that, well, you might be more likely to engage into illegal insider trading if you benefit from political connections. Why? Well, just because you might feel that you will be protected. So the basic motivation that we have is a traditional Bakerian view of criminal activity as a rational economic choice. Okay, so in this traditional view, nothing new. Any decision and criminal activity among all decisions is just the result of a trade-off between the net expected costs and benefits of what you might do or might not do. And in case of doing something illegal, well, you compare the expected punishment, the expected return, and the probability to get caught. Okay? So what we will the question that we want to investigate in this empirical paper is whether people that are politically connected might feel that they will be protected and or that they will face lower sanction if they get caught and thus be more likely to engage into I mean, fraudulent behavior on financial markets. So the only thing that we will do in this paper is to basically apply this idea of, okay, a connection might protect you to Stock market trading. Sorry, can I just ask a clarifying? Yeah. Is your story here that the political connection gives you protection 
Exactly. Not information. Exactly. Okay. I mean, this will be one interpretation, I mean, one challenge will be to disentangle, actually. You will see in one minute, I think. So, to be precise what we do in this paper, we use the 2007 French presidential election as a difference in different settings. So we'll compare two groups of people before and after. And we'll compare people who are connected to the to be elected President Nicolas Sarkozy to people who are not connected. And we'll interpret the election of Nicolas Sarkozy as President of the Republic as a shift in power of this guy and so as a shift in the value of being connected to that guy. Because now his power is changing and so he might, he might now be more able to protect you if you are connected to him or to do something else, but that's the way we interpret it here. So, what we will do is we'll have measures of the behavior of board members on financial markets, and we'll try to compare whether they change their behavior in diff and diff, be, uh, between before and after, between connected and non-connected people. And basically, we'll find, I will show you three things. So first, trades of connected directors will trigger larger abnormal returns on stock markets, after the elections and before, compared to non-connected directors, etc. So this is something that we will interpret as there is more information into trade by those people. So this might be more information because they are connected, they know about policy forecasts, etc. But this might be also more privileged information. But we observe this from a reaction by the market. So the second thing that we will do to try to disentangle will be to use to compute the time between the moment they trade and the moment they report their trade, because there are reporting requirements. And we'll see whether they break the law or not, because they are requested to report within five business days. And we'll show that they become much more likely to break this law, which is not a very bad thing, but still, I mean, they break the law. And finally, the third thing that we will show is that we will compute the time between each trade and the next public announcement of your firm about results or whatsoever. And under the hypothesis that the closer you trade from a public announcement, the more likely it is that you use information that will be used, that will be uh, made public at that point, well, this assumes that those guys, they are more likely to use this privileged information, okay? Everything that is here is indifference, indifference. So compare it connected to non-connected from before to after. So, just to give you a preview, and this will be the only graph you will see in this presentation because others are really crappy, but this is an example with the reporting delay. So board members of listed firms are requested to report their trade within five business days. Well, because it's friends and because the law was just enacted in 2006, you see that most people don't report their trade during over five business days. But still, I mean, the dash line it's the average of everybody, all board members of freshly listed firm. And you see it basically converged to what is legally required. The plain line is the behavior of people who are connected to Nicolas Sarkozy. And as you can see, before the election, it's more or less the same thing. And after the election, they start to be, I mean, to, 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 to completely do something different from other people. So they are much more likely to break the law. Okay? So, so the contribution to the literature of this paper are basically two folds. The first one is to contribute to the literature about the determinants of criminal activity. So here we basically just confirm, I mean, just show that political connections favor white collar criminality and we confirm uh, that social ties are important, into, uh, as an, are an important determinant of illegal decisions, basically. The second literature to which we contribute is the one about political connections. So as you may know, there is a huge literature about the way political connections affect firms, affect municipalities, I mean, between tiers of government, between firms, etc., whatever you want. But there is much less knowledge about the way political connections affect individuals. Actually, there are only a few papers which are really recent which try to observe the behavior of individuals and see whether they benefit or change their behavior depending on political connections they have. So we do contribute to this, to this literature by showing that, by providing suggestive evidence that political connection affects the behavior of individuals on financial markets 
in the direction which is committing, engaging more into illegal insider trading. So just, just a point, we provide only suggestive evidence. We won't be able to say this trade is illegal, that trade is legal, etc., etc. You will see we have like three dependent variables and everything converges, but I mean, we do not identify illegal trading. So, some words about insider trading regulation in France. So it's very similar to uh, the regulation is in all developed countries. So there was the first law passed in the 70s. It's monitored by the Autorité des Marchés Financiers, so the French uh, Security Actions Commission. And if you use uh, privileged information, you face severe penalties. People who are at high risk, so board members of listed firms, they are specially monitored. And they face legal disclosure requirement, which is that they need to disclose their trade to the authority within five business days. They need to do it. It's pretty new it's since 2006, because France is very low to implement European directives, but no, that's OK. Um, so these are legal rules. And also, there are informal rules, informal rules set up by boards, uh, boards of firms themselves, by uh, firms unions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is you should not do this, you should not do that, you should not trade before a public announcement, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because this will cast doubt on what you are doing, this will cast doubt on the whole community, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have legal rules, you have informal rules, but basically, it's pretty similar to all countries. So. Why do we use France uh, on this setting and this election in this paper? So the first bad answer is because we are all free French. But that's a, true, that's a fact, not an alternative fact. The second bad answer is because we have data. So it's as bad as good, but you will see we have nice data. Well, but then a little bit more seriously, uh, so this is basically a slide about both the external and the internal validity. France is a very is a, is, a, is a republic with a very strong presidential power. For, for instance, just as an example, the president appoints the head of the authorities that supervise financial markets. So he's really powerful. The election of Sarkozy in 2007, well, it's, it's a, a nice case study because this guy was known to be friends with businessmen and to have lots of connections with the industry and so on and so forth. So again, this may mitigate the external validity of what we have, but this makes uh, 2007 a nice moment to, to investigate our, uh, our question. Um, we also have anecdotal evidence about the impunity feeling of friends of Nicolas Sarkozy. But it's not an academic proof, a scientific proof, but we do have anecdotal evidence. And finally, with, uh, in a former paper with Renault, we already show that firms benefited from connections to Nicolas Sarkozy around 2007. Not individuals, but firms. So, to do what we want to do, we need three things. We need data, so we need a group of politically connected people. We need a counterfactual group, and we need measures of behaviors on financial markets. So to construct political connections, we basically use two sources. So we will define the group of politically, politically, politically connected directors as Sarkozy, Sarkozy affiliates. The first source that we use is the list of large contributors to Sarkozy 2007 political campaign. So you need to know that in France, first, firms are not allowed to contribute to political parties and campaign. Only individuals can. But the list of contributors is not public. But in 2012, the list of large contributors as to Sarkozy's electoral campaign was leaked by an information web website, which is Mediapart, which was also part of the Panama Papers, etc., etc., the investigation. This list, I mean, has not been uh, contested by the party. From everything that we know, it is comprehensive exhaustive, correct, accurate, whatever you want. It has been extensively commented, including by people from that list. And what we know is that it has been set up just for logistical reasons by the party itself, to manage, let's say, the mailing. This was like a group of nearly 600 people who were invited to dinners, 
who were attending special uh, occasions with the party, etc. So these are important contributors. Not all contributors, but these are a small group, 600 is not very much, of, um, of large contributors. The second source that we use to define politically connected uh, directors is the list of direct friends of Nicolas Sarkozy. With Renault, for our pre uh, previous paper, we constructed a list of 27 businessmen who are known, publicly known, to be friends with Nicolas Sarkozy. I mean, you have columns in the newspaper, you have books written on friendship, you have pictures like, was a cycle together, and so on and so forth. So these are people that everybody knows are friends of Nicolas Sarkozy. So we construct that list. And just, just for the record, there is only one of, the, of these 27 guys whose name appear on that list. So this means that those guys they help their friends in a different way than just giving some money and being in this club, in this private club. So altogether we get like 600 names, which are people connected to Nicolas Sarkozy. Okay, these are people. So uh, just to give you an idea, well, those guys. I'm not saying they are bad guys, but uh, this is a 2014. Uh, headline from Mediapart's information website reporting about one of the large contributors of Sarkozy campaign and untangling his offshore uh, setting uh, formation or uh, something like this. It's, it's a very nice guy. Um, and when I told you like Sarkozy was known in France as being connected to rich people, to business people, this is typically the types of pictures that you have in French newspaper. So uh, 500 banknotes with Sarkozy. And this is also uh, a Mediapart article uh, about one of the friends of Nicolas Sarkozy, whose name is was revealed by the Panama Papers. Okay, so we won't speak about the Panama Papers, just to give you an idea of, of who we are talking about. Okay, so now we need data about trades, and we need counterfactual groups. Okay, so because of the law, board members of French listed firms are requested to report their trade. And so since the mid-2006, we have all the information about all individual trades by board members of French listed firms. And so we get all this data. It's official public data. Actually, in France, even if the public authority is supposed to make it public, they are not able to answer an email and to provide an Excel sheet. So there are private companies that get all the data and then they resell it. But I mean, that's, maybe it's not corruption, but something like that. Um, so, a priori, these data are completely exhaustive. For each trade, we know who traded, we know the transaction date, the date at which the trade was disclosed to the authority and posted on the administration website. It's automatic. Uh, we know the trade size, we know the director's position. Unfortunately, we don't know much, but we have like information about what is going on. To give you an idea, um, between mid-2006 mid and mid-2008, so over two years, there have been 7, 000, close to 7,500 trades. These guys, they don't trade every day. I mean, that's trading <coughs> stock of the firm you are sitting on the board. So it's not day-to-day -day trading, high frequency trading. It's sometimes you trade, OK? These 7,500 trades have been made by close to 1,600 traders, so directors. Among those 1,643 directors, we found 43 Sarkozy affiliates. So when you overlap this 1,643 with the 600, you have a 43 overlap. Okay? And so what we will do is we will compare the behavior of these 43 Sarkozy affiliates to the behavior of other people, so to the 1,600 other guys. Of course, those guys are different. They are Sarkozy affiliates. Actually, just looking at the number of all the trades they perform, well, that's a small share, 43 out of 1,600, uh, uh, 1, but they perform close to 10% of all transactions. And they are different from others. They sit on, on the boards of larger firms. They are more likely to hold executive positions. And they are friends of Sarkozy, for sure. So we need to take care of that. So the way we'll take care of that will be constructing by constructing three different samples. The first one is like the stupid agnostic sample. We don't do anything. We just compare the 43 
to, one, to all the other guys. So it's doing nothing. It does not solve any issue. The second one, well, is a sample that we call the affiliate firm sample. In that case, we select only board members, I mean directors, who are sitting on boards at which there is at least one Sarkozy affiliate. So with this strategy, we get rid of all observables that may explain why Sarkozy affiliates are sitting on the board of larger firms, for example. Okay? So all background, et cetera, et cetera, that goes in that direction. So it's not perfect, because now they are sitting on the same board, but still, some of them became friends or connected with Nicolas Sarkozy, and others are not. So we want to do something else, which is more agnostic. We construct a matched sample. So we just perform a one, to, not a one to one actually, a close matching sample <coughs> between all affiliates and other board members, but removing from the matching pool all people who are sitting on the same board. So we want to, here we get people who have the same firm, and here we exclude people from the same firms, and we select other people. Okay, so again, it's not perfect, but that's the best we can do for the moment. And yes, to match, we use like firm size, not the same firm, but firm size, industry, executive status, and the size and the number of trade and things like this. How much time do we have? Seven. Perfect. Okay, so we'll construct three measures of uh, behavior of directors of fi on financial markets. The first one will be abnormal return. So, the abnormal return is the change in a stock's return that is not explained by the market's evolution. So what we do is for each of the 7,385 trades, we calibrate a market model on the period that just precedes, I mean 30 days or 200 days as you want, that just precedes the trade. And then we predict what should have been the return of this stock over the next day. And we compare what we observe to this prediction. And this is called an abnormal return. And the literature argues that this abnormal return is a proxy for the information content of the trade. Why? Because if there is an event, and the event here is a trade, and you, you see that I traded, and you react to this, this means that you think that there is some information in the fact that I just traded. Okay? So this is a measure of the information content of a trade. So of course this might be because you react because you think that I have better information because I'm connected, or you react because you think I just use, I cheat, I use privileged information. I won't be able to disentangle fully between both. But we have two other dependent variables that give us like converging evidence of what is happening. We use this very simple requirement which is that trade needs to be disclosed within five business days. It says a yes or no. And we just compute, I mean, we will construct a variable which will be zero if you disclose within five business days and one if you break the law, okay? So it's a legal requirement either you break the law or not. And finally, we compute the time to each firm next result, next result announcement. So to do this, we scrap the agenda of all public announcements of French listed firm and for each of the 7,385 trade, we look for this firm next public announcement and we compute the time between both, okay? We can also compute the time since the last one, we use it as a business check. So here's the implicit assumptions that we make is that <coughs> privately available information is at least weekly increasing as you get closer from the public announcement if you are a board member, okay? So maybe it's not, but it's surely not decreasing. So that's the three measures that we will use. And the identification method that we use is really simple. So you remember about the samples and the counterfactual, we just do a diff in diff setting, which is that we have a, some, uh, a stupid OLS uh, regression, where we have one of the three measures on the left-hand side of the behavior on financial market, and on the right-hand side, we have uh, a dummy variable that indicates whether the guy is affiliated to Sarkozy and a dummy variable for the time after the election. And we are interested into the interaction term. We'll use some control variable, et cetera, et cetera. 
Just to be clear, we take one year before the election because we cannot go further in the past because the law was not passed. So we don't have any observation prior to mid-2006, to April 2006, actually. And then we take one year after the election. It's not a discontinuity-style approach. Why? Because the election has been anticipated. Because those guys, they don't trade every day. So if you just focus one month after one month before, basically you have like 10 trades, OK? So we don't do this. We just compare two big behaviors. I mean, four, because it's a different diff. So let's go for the results. That would be really simple. So every t I have three tables. They all look the same. One for each of the dependent variables. Three samples, the full sample, affiliation samples, and the matched board member samples. And then two columns. The only difference between that, in the first column, you don't have any control variables. And the in the second column, we add like firm fixed effects, uh, interaction term we, with whether with the dummies that indicate with the, uh, whether the board member is an executive board member or not, and uh, uh, trade size, uh, not fixed effect, but uh, variable, and things like this. So we just complement it a little bit. Of course, for the last sample, we don't use firm fixed effect because people are not in the same firm because we excluded people that are not affiliated but which are uh, sitting on the same board. Uh, so we replace by firm cover yet like industry, uh, sales, and things like this. Okay? So what you can see is that there are stars and everything is positive. Okay? And the coefficient I show you is the interaction term. So this means that in terms of difference in difference, trades by Sarkozy affiliate trigger larger abnormal return after the, the election than before the election compared to trades by non-connected board members. Okay? So interpretation, more informative trade. Is it more information because they are connected or more cheating information? Well, we don't know. But this is what we are interested in. Second one, non-compliance with the legal time limit. Again, oh, sorry. Again, everything is positive. Uh, so it's a linear probability model. So if you want to interpret as a, uh, just, just roughly, you see that the percentage point is between 15 and 20, or there is a 25 at some point. But basically, uh, it means that they become 20% more likely to break the rule after the, the election than before the election. Third dependent variable, the time between your trade and the next public announcement by your firm. Well, this time everything is negative, meaning that the time shrinks. So they become about one, one to two months, I mean, they start to trade one to two months closer from the next public announcement by their firm after the election than before the election. So they, I mean, their trades are closer, so they are more likely to be made using an information that will be announced at that date. That's our interpretation. Okay? So that's basically the result. We have a lot of robustness check, which I won't detail, because, I mean, it's not the time. Uh, maybe just, just, um, just to mention, so we have different, I mean, whatever you can imagine. Uh, on standards or on the way to define dependent variables whatsoever. On the bottom, there is the one that I like a lot, which is that we selected four non-presidential elections that's, that happened between 2008 and 2012, and four randomly selected dates, just to use it as placebo, and to check that we don't obtain any positive difference in difference uh, results for that. Otherwise, there are lots of other things, but I prefer just to conclude on that, which is the final question, which is, so, Assume that we are right and that the evidence that we present actually uncover like a higher likelihood to commit illegal trading. If they commit illegal trading, it's because, I mean, they have some advantage in it. So they should make more money from it. So the question we want to ask is, that, is whether, how much they did using this uh, feeling of impunity or, or higher protection. Unfortunately, it's not possible to observe the complete evolutions of portfolio of board members. Why? Just because before to mid 2006, prior to mid-2006, we don't have any observation. So we cannot compute the whole cycle of sales and, 
and buy, etc., etc., and purchases of, of, of stocks. So what we do is something imperfect, but which has, which has been done in such cases by the literature. We compute what is called latent benefits. So it's a little bit similar to abnormal return, but it's not. Actually, so everything that I told you is about the timing. Like, when do you trade? And, I mean, relatively to the date of the next public announcement, and when do you disclose your trade? So it's about you decide when to trade, right? And so what we do is we compute for each trade the difference in the return between the stock that you just traded when you buy one stock and the no average market evolution over the next 30 days. That's an imperfect way to compute latent benefit, but that's what the literature do when we have no other solutions. So we obtain some estimates, and at the end of the day, we get this number, which is 30 million euro. 30 million euro should be some estimate of the amount of money they would have made because of illegal trading, according to our estimates. And yeah, OK, this is the conclusion. I will not repeat just what I just say, which is that we provide suggestive evidence of this and that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay, so questions? I have a question. Yeah, jump in. Yes, I mean, maybe something, but connection can be personal, it can be through the party, of course. Huh? So when you match, uh, do you control for party connection as well? You know, there is this literature on the value of being affiliated to a party and the value of being affiliated to a specific individual to the party. No? So do you well, capture both? Yeah, we define connections only like to Nicolas Sarkozy in general. We don't know whether they are members of the party or not. Okay, that's what I was. Sorry, I was wondering, can you also create a, a comparable sam sample of party connected firms? Because you know, the literature they show, for example, in the US, yeah. you know, uh, firms connected to the Republican uh, jump, have a, a normal return on the stock market, enormous, because of this political connector. So you may want also to have that, to disentangle the two effects, right? Or that's not possible. Well, in, okay. So first, firms cannot contribute to political parties in France. Connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, they can be connected via individual connection, like friendship connections uh, uh, between a board member and the politicians. The thing is that at some point we use people that are sitting on the same board and we use firm fixed effect. So in that case, it's really the connections that we have together and not that people of your board have with me. Because I compare other people of the same board, which are not connected to me, to, to Sarkozy actually, not to me, <laughs> with you. So we get rid of that by using firm fixed effect at that point. Uh, I have two questions. So one is about your conclusion on fraudulent activity. There was nothing in the paper about fraud. Sorry? In your study, in your study, there was nothing about fraud. But we see that there is a specifically selected people, group of people, that self-selected to support Sarkozy. They might be smarter than the others because they well predicted the, the win of Sarkozy. So they might have better consultants, better knowledge, they're smarter, they're lucky, whatever and their behavior on market. Just uh, another example of their excellent choices. No, ex another thing is, these people not randomly selected as directors. So firms cho chose them, or how they get on board. Okay. So that's another selection. And they, there is, again, they might be smart or whatever, and uh, lucky, and firms chose them. And another thing, as long as you have people, uh, so from, uh, people on board of the same firms, you need at least cluster your error terms because the, there is like too high, um, uh, too small errors in your statistics, and that might be because so of this uh, clustering, uh, at least at industry or firm level, depending on uh, the structure of the data you have. Okay, thanks. Um, about the second selection that you mentioned, which is that these people are board members, well, um, we compare, we make a comparison between board members. So this should not, I mean, 
except if the selection mechanism in two boards is different between the two groups, this will not affect your result. But for sure, it's a special sample. It's a sample of board members, so it's not like, it's not like us, I think. But the first mechanism uh, selection that, that you mentioned, well, yes, exactly. That's precisely why we do our best to discuss like, uh, which comparison group we should take. If, at the end of the day, these 40 people are especially smart people who bet well on politicians, who exploit uh, all weaknesses of the legislation and so on and so forth, yes, what we uncover... No, I mean, well, they break rules. They break rules. And they don't get caught. I mean, after all, after all, No, no, but, but, but finally, after all, in, in such a case, if selection is explained by something that is completely correlated with the treatment that we define, yes, for sure. I mean, what we uncover is something else. The question is, how should we tackle this? So we try to, 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 to deal with a firm fixed effect to have like, people who come from the same background. We compare executive people to non-executive ones. I mean, we cannot go deeper in that direction. About standards error, uh, yes, I mean, in those tables there are not clustered. In the paper we have lots of different clustering methods because actually it's not so obvious that we should cluster at the firm or at industry level because, I mean, that's a setting in which we have time, we have individuals because they don't trade every day, you have firms. I mean, it's not so easy. And after all, everything is, is fine. I mean, you can cluster what, how, whichever, whichever way you want. Remark and one question. First, about this 30 million euro, I think you should not compare with market index, but with uh, return to the control group trades. It would be fairer. No, that, that's what we do, actually. Okay, but, but you wrote uh, that it's how you compare with market index. Yeah, okay, we compare with market index, but then we do the double difference. Ah, okay, then. Exactly. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, the question is, uh, among these 43, how many were the direct friends of Sarkozy and how many were the contributors? It's 22 uh, contributors and 19 direct friends. And did you compare between these two groups? Yeah, actually, so we have this in the paper and in longer talks I do present this, but in fact, it seems that the result on abnormal return is mostly driven by direct friends, which is consistent because those guys are known to be connected with Sarkozy and abnormal return is how the market reacts. So, if a connection needs to be visible for, for people to react to this. But all other, uh, the two other dependent variables, the results are the same for both groups. But I don't want to push this part of the interpretation. Why? Because in terms of statistical inference, when we already compare 43 people to all others, when, when we separate them into two, like the identification and the statistical inference becomes to be really, I mean, complicated and weak. So I don't want to push, push this. But if anything, that's exactly what I said, which is that they seem to behave similarly for the two last dependent variables, and for the market reaction, it seems to be driven by uh, visible guys. Uh, yeah, so, um, like uh, you, you said, if in DIF you didn't show us the pretrend for the main uh, outcome variable, these abnormal returns. So I guess this is, would have been useful, especially to reply to her point, I think. And then, mm. second, you play a lot with mechanisms, say it's information cheating, but you don't know. Or no. I'm missing something. I, we don't know. At the end of the day, we don't know. Okay. We, we, we just provide like a set of evidences that can be in the, interpreted as such. Yeah, but we don't because know. the motivation of the paper is about criminal behavior. I will, uh, you know, push just uh, the political <laughs> connection story. As, uh, Are you one of the referee or? No, no, no. But <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. Yes. Uh, I, I, I totally agree. No, because it's a bit misleading. I find it, you know, because we, as a, you no, know, you, we are always conservative. I think with our statement. So. No, but you referee number three definitively. <laughs> Well, no, because we do not uh, point to anybody. He doesn't care. Okay, so final question. All right. 
So, so I was wondering, so you come up with this estimate of 30 million euros, I guess. Right? So is that a lot or, or not? Because should we, should we really be, be concerned now about, about these political connections? Because we know from other papers in, in Indonesia it could be as much as, you know, political connections could be worth as much as 25% of firm values. That's something that, that I can think of as a substantial share of GDP that is generated by these, by these political connections. Here we are talking about a very large economy and you find a result for 30 million euros. So I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So. Um, I don't know either. For, uh, so I get your point about uh, international comparison and comparing to the size of the economy. Uh, so f for individuals, for sure, I mean, if you divide 30 million by 40 guys, it's close to 1 million per guy. So it's, it's pretty important. Is it a real problem? I mean, that, that's a good question. I need to think about it. Okay, thanks a lot, Mark. Yeah. Thank you.